She was a great leader, a great prime minister, a great Britain, and a great conservative. Margaret Thatcher embodied strong conservative values. Enterprise, freedom, choice, competition, liberty. She gave the Conservative Party intelligent and committed leadership. Where there is discord, may we bring harmony. Where there is error, may we bring truth. Where there is doubt, may we bring faith. And where there is despair, may we bring hope. She had some very simple, very heartfelt convictions. You can't spend what you haven't earned. It's not governments that create jobs, it's businesses. Sound money, strong defence, stand up for your country. Those things informed her life, they informed her politics, they informed what her governments did, and they changed Britain for the better. She and Clement Attlee were the two great formative prime ministers. One set out to be, create a socialist country, and she set out to unravel a socialist country. I presume this is to enable us to sweep Britain clean of socialism. <laughs> Almost everything was done to transfer power from the bureaucracy and the politicians to the people. I offer the certainty of liberty and the chance of property ownership, and more than just a chance, that people should be able to own their own homes is deep at the heart of conservative philosophy. She knew in a way that only a shopkeeper's daughter could know the pride that people would get in owning their own home. It was her policy of selling council homes and allowed millions of people to become homeowners. We offer them a place that belongs to them, their own home in which to start life together and later to bring up their children. She brought to us all the whole concept of a property-owning, share-owning democracy. Good afternoon, British Telecom Share Information Authority. And it's in the natural instinct, in her view, of every person that they want to do better for themselves. They want to do better for their families. Man's right to work as he will, to spend what he earns, to own property, to have the state as servant and not as master, these are the British inheritance. They are the essence of a free economy. It's very difficult, unless you lived through the 60s and 70s, to realize what came of this country. We were seen to be the sick man of Europe. Unfortunately, it was true, um, and that had to change. We're carrying out the largest program of denationalization in our history. Just a few years ago in Britain, privatization was thought to be a pipe dream. Now it's a reality and a popular one. These industries, she said, must be in real, effective public ownership. In other words, the people themselves must be the owners, not the state. She unleashed an entrepreneurial revolution that empowered millions and millions of people to own their own home, to set up their own business, to own shares in companies. This was a transformation in the way uh, our economy operated. We've been ruled by men who live by illusions. The illusion that you can spend money you haven't earned without eventually going bankrupt or falling into the hands of your creditors. The illusion that real jobs can be conjured into existence by government decree like rabbits out of a hat. The illusion that there's some other way of creating wealth than by hard work and satisfying your customers. The illusion that you can have freedom and enterprise without believing in free enterprise. The new jobs, they come from people starting businesses, growing businesses, taking risks, seizing the opportunity. And she understood that and she realized the importance of the need to encourage people to do that. People would come up to her at receptions and say, I just want to thank you. You gave me the chance to set up my own business with the Enterprise Allowance Scheme. And Margaret always said to them, no, no, I should be thanking you 
Without people like you, Thatcherism would just be a theory. Freedom is the birthright of every citizen. To preserve and defend that freedom, to defend it from within and from without, is the first duty of any Prime Minister. And Margaret Thatcher um, felt very strongly about freedom, um, about the liberty of people to go about their business without constraint. Margaret Thatcher always said that if freedom was worth defending at home, it was also worth exporting abroad. And that's why she and Ronald Reagan stood up to the Soviet Union. She wore that badge of the, the insult, the Iron Lady, as a great compliment. It was such a gift to her because it embodied who she really was. I stand before you tonight in my red star chiffon evening gown. <laughs> softly made up and my fair hair gently waved. <laughs> the Iron Lady of the Western World. She was really the first post-war British Prime Minister who said Britain does have a strong role in the world and we're going to assert it. Margaret Thatcher had a huge belief in her own country and the right of a people to decide their own future. We have not successfully rolled back the frontiers of the state in Britain, only to see them reimposed at a European level, with a European superstate exercising a new dominance from Brussels. Right through Margaret Thatcher's premiership, you can see an absolutely lion-hearted love for her country, for Great Britain. Our first duty to freedom is to defend our own. The Falklands conflict and the way in which she handled the conflict and her steely determination put Britain back on the map. What the Falklands showed was that Britain could do it. When we had the will, we found the way. Those weeks of the Falklands War were some of the, the most lonely of her life. Um, although you're supported by your cabinet and your colleagues, in the end, only a Prime Minister can take that decision. And all the lives of all those going down to the South Atlantic uh, were laid at her feet. The spirit of the South Atlantic was the spirit of Britain at her best. That was some Iron Lady. Mrs Thatcher was a conviction politician. She didn't believe in just accepting the consensus. No, no, no. She showed that by effort, by belief, by hard work, you could change Britain and turn things round. It's a matter of continuing pride to me that it is the Conservative Party that had the first woman leader and the only party so far that has had a woman prime minister. She was an optimist. She was the politician who said, I refuse to accept that Britain's best days are behind us. Britain's best days are ahead of us. It was her uh, absolute determination and conviction that made the difference. Britain today is very much Thatcher's Britain. She was a titan of British politics, of world politics. She was a great conservative because she put conservative principles into action. She knew it wasn't enough to debate, to think, to talk. You need to act. That's what she did. She reshaped Britain in a more conservative mold. She saved our country. That is her true legacy.